So you're supposed to write a narrative essay. Well, I'm going to give you some things to think about when you're writing these narrative essays that might make that task a little less painful, maybe a little bit more fun, and hopefully something that you can feel is a good use of your time. Maybe even start to think about how you could use this kind of writing in lots of different ways that are uh, beneficial to you. So narrative essays are unique because unlike other kinds of writing you might do in school, it's not a set formula and there's not just one way to do it. So you really get to have narrative writing as a conjunction between your heart and your mind and your experiences. So what is a narrative anyway? A narrative, when you use that word in any context, really means a story. Um, it's oftentimes a personal story and that story is used to support, support a larger point. Memoir is a form of narrative writing. Those are usually longer works, um, but you can use narrative in lots of small ways in larger works as well. You can use it for persuasion. You could use it in a cover letter. You could use it in a speech. Uh, you could use it in an interview. So narrative is not just something that you write for art's sake, although it's good for that too, but it's something that you can use a lot of times in order to be persuasive. Anytime that you tell a story, which is what a narrative is, it's important that you have a point. You know what it sounds like when you're listening to somebody and they're talking and there's no point to their story and you're just thinking, hurry up and get to the point already. And you don't wanna be that person when you are doing your narrative writing. So when you start writing your essay, you might have kind of a general idea in mind and then as you begin to write and tell the story and relive your experiences, uh, the point might become clearer in your mind. But by the time you consider your essay finished, the thesis should be clear. A thesis is the point of your story, the point of your writing. The story that you tell in your narrative should reveal the truth and significance of your thesis. It should help people understand how what you believe is true and what that might look like in real life. So when you're writing a thesis in some kinds of school papers, you're, co you're coached to have a very direct statement early in your essay that says, this is what I will prove. Um, and that's an explicit thesis, and that's very appropriate for some kinds of writing. However, you have a little bit more freedom in narrative writing. In narrative writing, you can either have an implicit or an explicit thesis. An implicit thesis means that the overall point is clearly implied, but it's not necessarily directly stated. So even though there's no like thesis statement in some narrative essays, if six people talked about that essay, like you, like you do in class, you would probably all come to the same general consensus about the author's message. You can also have an explicit thesis, uh, if you like. An explicit thesis is directly and clearly stated, um, but in narrative writing, oftentimes that might occur at the end of the essay rather than at the beginning. And again, it's not a requirement to even have one, as long as the point of your story is clear. So why even do this? Why learn to write in narrative? Um, well, Narrative is a really powerful way to get people to understand and hear and care about what you're saying. Um, it's storytelling. It's what we've done since the beginning of time as humans, is that we tell of our experiences and then our listeners can kind of feel what we felt at that time, care about our message. So telling a story to get your point across engages your reader's emotions. It creates a personal connection between you and your listener or your reader. And it can also help you humanize abstractions. And what I mean by that is it takes something, some big grand concept and puts a human face on it. So it's one thing to write an essay about homelessness. And it's another thing to write an essay in which you describe a conversation you had with a homeless person or talk about the time when you yourself were homeless. So it puts a human face on an issue, which is much easier for people to care about and think about. Another advantage to narrative writing is that it allows you to avoid lecturing. Instead of saying, believe this or do that, you say, here is a time when I experienced that, and then you invite others to, uh, to believe whatever it is that you want them to believe or do whatever it is that you want them to do or care about whatever it is you want them to care about. So you're going to write one. How do you do it? Um, typically, a narrative essay will have a scene or several scenes woven together and also have reflection. So a scene would be a specific moment in time. 
And in that writing, you're revealing the experience in real time. And so it's more like you're witnessing it firsthand. It sounds exactly like if you were reading a story. It wouldn't be every time I went to my grandmother's house, it would be the day that I went to my grandmother's house to make spaghetti with her. And so in that part of your essay, you would bring a specific moment to life. And it doesn't necessarily matter that the moment itself was super significant at the time. It more matters that you use that moment in order to talk about your broader idea, maybe as, a, as an example or as a, even a symbol if you wanted to, um, because you're going to then follow that scene or those scenes with direct discussion of the meaning inherent in that scene. So what was the importance or what did you learn or what a larger idea does that spaghetti making with your grandmother signify? So you'll have scene, which is your narrative element, and then a reflective developed paragraph connecting to that scene, but both parts should support the same thesis. Everything in your essay should support that thesis. And this graphic organizer gives you one way that you could approach writing a narrative essay. You, it's pr probably preferable to start with the scene and jump right in with your story uh, and then follow it with reflection, but it's not necessary to do it that way. It's just a suggestion. You can also weave in multiple scenes. Um, it doesn't have to just be one. But however you choose to put it together, the important thing is that you're telling your story with style. And that's what's gonna make your essay stand out because your voice is unique, your experience is unique, and you need to tell a great story as only you can tell it because you're trying to bring a moment to life. And so it doesn't matter if you're telling an experience that everyone has had, it matters how you tell that story. And so I'm gonna give you some tricks to think about making your moment that you wanna convey come to life. I would say the most important trick to bringing a moment to life or writing a scene is that you're using concrete, specific detail. So I want you to think about these two statements. I was happy to be home. Okay, you told me you were happy to be home. Do I care? No, that's nice for you, but it's not like I can really connect to that at all. Another way to write that would be to use concrete specific details to show what kind of happiness you're talking about. How invested should I be in your happiness? How happy are we talking? So how about if we did it like this? Sitting on the back porch at my parents' house, I was amazed at how relaxed I felt. There was no hint of my worries about bills and deadlines and dirty dishes in the sink. I completely gave myself over to being cared for as I hadn't done since I left home 15 years ago. Now, when you read that, a reader will have a better sense of what kind of emotions you're dealing with and just how intense those emotions are and how much they should care about it also helps them better visualize it and connect. So if, if we look at concrete specific details in that second passage, it would be the things that you can really kind of zero in on and think about. Where was I? Where is home? Sitting on the back porch at my parents' house. That's a concrete specific detail. What worries? Bills, deadlines, dirty dishes in the sink. Think about how those specific details tell you something about the character. You can tell perhaps an age. You can tell the kinds of things she typically worries about. Um, and so that helps you to understand her as a person. And then I left home 15 years ago. That gives you a sense of her age and also introduces perhaps even a conflict to this story. Why did she leave home and now why is she back after 15 years? So those concrete details are what do the work of the story and make it fun and interesting to read. Another important trick to bringing a moment to life is imagery. So imagery just means words that evoke the senses and most people usually go straight to visual imagery when they think of that because it's as humans the uh, sense that we rely on the heaviest. But don't forget the other senses. There's your sense of touch, your sense of taste, your sense of hearing, your sense of smell, and your sense of vision. Um, so you can try to utilize all those senses in various and subtle ways. You don't want to bombard people with imagery, but you want to use it strategically. So if you're going to describe something in great detail, you're basically doing a close-up on it, and it helps people to kind of get absorbed into that scene. So Thinking about how we could use imagery in order to create a mood, um, let's think about this scene right here. So a visual that we could say is, 
looking at, okay, there's light coming into the room, but I don't want to just say that there's light coming into the room. I want to tell that image in such a way that it also has feeling in it. So the light pooled across the top of the green desks. Okay, maybe even more. The light shone through the room and illuminated the tops of the green desks. So you're kind of getting a mood there. Uh, what about if we look at, think about maybe some sound imagery? Uh, well, in a room like this, I imagine it looks silent, but outside the classroom, children shrieked with joy. That's kind of a cliche, but that was on the fly. Um, okay, so that's gonna set the mood versus outside the classroom door, there was nothing but silence again. Okay, so you're not just saying what you see, but you're sort of painting it in such a way that it creates a mood. The papers on the desk were strewn hastily as if left when someone was in a big hurry. Oh gosh, that was terrible. You could probably do much better. Think about how you would talk about those papers. What kind of a feeling do you have about why those papers were left there? So when you're doing this, when you are telling these um, images, try to use action verbs instead of being verbs. And so being verbs are, uh, there's a list of them, is, are, were, was, be, being, been. Those are what are called being verbs. And there's nothing wrong with being verbs. In fact, they're very important words to use. If you only wrote using action verbs all the time, your writing would be really weird. But when you're in the part of your essay where you're trying to tell the story and you're trying to describe a scene, those action verbs are going to give your reader something to imagine. It's an opportunity to activate their imagination in a, in a visual kind of way. So uh, examples of action verbs would be wonder, cry, describe, gesture, jump. And so you wanna think about the difference if I said I was at the beach, well, what's my reader gonna imagine? They're gonna imagine the beach, but what am I doing there? What, is it, what does it look like when you're wuzzing? I don't know. Um, instead, I frolicked at the beach. I leapt at the beach. And so those are a little trick for you to use to help people really picture what's happening in your story. So when you're organizing your narrative, remember you wanna have the scene and within that scene, you might have some exposition. Exposition is like the background information where you're summarizing a large period of time, but you don't want a lot of this because that's not really the interesting part of your story. You really don't have to tell the entire context or history that led up to the moment that's in your, in your essay. You really can sort of let it speak for itself a lot of times because only that little moment might matter. And then in the reflection, you're explaining the importance of your story. So you don't have to tell the 10 years that led up to you frolicking at the beach. We're just gonna jump into that moment with you and let your readers kind of go for the ride with you. So it's kind of a balance. There should be some direct telling in your essay in which you, as the writer, take command of the message and explain exactly what was so important or significant about this story that you're telling and what did you learn from it? Um, what should others learn from it? Um, you know, what's, what's the aftermath of, of that particular moment? But there should be much more showing, much more storytelling, and that's really what makes a narrative essay unique. All of it is used to support one particular point, which is your thesis. I would say that narrative writing is one of the more enjoyable types of writing you might do for school. Um, it's a way for you to process, share, preserve your life experiences. Um, you, if you write in a narrative essay, you can, you can really kind of, as it would be with a memoir, share your, your vision of the world and let other people see the world through your eyes. And so um, you, you really wanna try in this kind of writing to enjoy yourself. And if you enjoy writing it, it's much more likely that other people will enjoy reading it. So that's important too, because when you're writing an essay, you're not just writing it for yourself, you're typically writing it for other people and you want them to um, get something meaningful out of it too. And if you find it to be meaningful, much more likely that your readers will find it meaningful as well. So that's narrative writing in a nutshell. Try it, read narrative essays. You'll be surprised at how fast those reads go compared to other kinds of reading. And right on.